Hello everyone, it's David Morkunis here, and thank you so much for tuning into my video. Uh, this presentation is entitled The Power of Daily Reviews, Spaced Interleaved and Retrieval Practice. And what follows is the talk that I delivered at the Sharing Best Practice Conference uh, in Melbourne. So uh, for those of you watching, just keep in mind the screen can be a bit difficult to, to see at times, all right, uh, just because of how far away the camera is. I also speak very quickly, so just know that going in. Uh, at a couple of points throughout the video, uh, it will cut out. Uh, that's because I showed uh, the attendees a couple of short clips of my students. So for privacy reasons, I've removed those for this version of the video. Uh, and finally, I want to give a couple of massive shout outs. Uh, the first one's to Ethan Fawn. Uh, without his help, uh, a lot of these ideas uh, would not be possible. All right, the, the vast majority of this work is his. Um, I've merely taken it and kind of uh, you know tweaked it for my own use. So a big thank you to to Ethan and also some of the design ideas for these slides uh, originally came from Michael McKinnon. So a uh, big thanks to him as well. Uh, if you've got any questions or queries after you watch this, uh, please feel free to to seek me out on Twitter. I'd be more than happy to help. I hope you enjoy. All right, uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, just to let you know what kind of headspace I'm in right now. 20 minutes ago, my laptop didn't work. Had to borrow one from the office. <laughs> didn't have the right font on it. Had to get it installed. Thought that I needed admin access for that. Thankfully, it went through. Also, this kind of the can of Coke, so I'm going to it. <laughs> You won't keep up. It's okay. I'm very nervous as well. All right, so uh, my talk today is about the power of daily reviews. You've all got whiteboards there. You need to get them ready because we're going to get straight into it. All right. If you see a white slide that's listening mode, that means no writing, reading along with me, or chanting. All right, if you see a tan coloured slide that's writing mode, you have permission to write. And then when I say three, two, one, you're all going to go, shit it, and hold your whiteboards up. Can we practice that? Three, two, one. Shit Are you going to get a say? Come on, three, two, one. Shit Beautiful. All right, here we go. Running the fives with me. Jump in when you're ready. One, five, five. Two, five, ten. Three, five, fifteen. Four, five, twenty. Five, five, twenty, five. Six, five, thirty. Seven, five, thirty, five. Eight, five, forty. Nine, five, forty, five. Ten, five, fifty. Have a breath. We're going to go backwards. Here we go. 10 plus 50, 9 plus 45, 8 plus 40, 7 plus 35, 6 plus 30, 5 plus 25, 4 plus 20, 3 plus 15, 2 plus 10, 1 plus 5, keep up, go. Answers. Let's start from, uh, no, so 10 code slide, that's writing mode, so write your answers now. So, start from the first 10, always the first 10 below the line, and then uh, some challenge questions for you below the line. It's very generous today. I could put the sevens in now. We'll do the fives. We'll do the fives today. So, I'll give you a few moments to get your answers up. Alright, check one guy's in front. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Should have told you, you just need your answers. You don't have to write the equations, it's just the answers. Fantastic. Excellent. Good stuff. If you remember this two by two digit multiplication. <laughs> All right, three, two, one, and. Yeah, yeah, come on, let me, see your, let me see your beautiful answers. All right, fantastic. All right, back to you. We're just going to read the answers out as they appear. Here we go. 5, 15, 30, 50, 35, 40, 10, 25, 45, 20. Read the long ones, Mindy. Here we go. 90, 250, 3,000, 1,925, 2,275, 139. All right, you've got three seconds to run the whiteboards out. Here we go. Come on. Three, two, one, and back into listing mode. Oh. Cap's cool. Could be a new one. Oh. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, we're going to skip count backwards by five, starting from 75, starting from which number? 75. Here we go. 75, 70, 65, 60, 55, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Well done. All right. How many objects are there? Go ahead and run them up. I'll give you a big clue. Each group has five. Yeah. 65. Oh, whoa, 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 we didn't pull the answers out. That's a tan coloured slide. Right on our whiteboards, please. Oh, oh first morning. Just make it realistic. Oh, you know, you know what? Fair I'm enough. Fair enough. Alright, I'll you. speak to you after the session's over. Uh, uh, on the landing. Alright, and then some bonus questions for you, like. Three, two, one, and. Can't hear you, come on. Yeah, there we go. Alright, how many objects are there? 65, let's check, let's check, here we go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, well done. If I share those dots evenly, that means I'm dividing by 5, each share's worth 13, good. We triple, 195, if we add 35, then multiply by 100, 10,000. Alright, you can put your whiteboards down, here we go. 
Have a breath. All right, so uh, that was a very, very quick demonstration of what reviews are, okay? Hopefully you'll have already started to notice a few things. Very quick, extremely quick. And did I wait for you to answer every question? No, just move on, all right? Uh, the idea is to maximize time on task. So we want them to be accessible for our low kids and our high kids, all right? And basically drag them all up. So you can see those mass examples before, if I fling that. You see the ones down the bottom, quite difficult. Do I expect every grade, every kid in my grade to do them? Do them? No, of course not. What is what to get the first ten done? As soon as I see that my sort of my lower kids have got those first ten, we move on straight away. While they're doing those though, the kids are really great, move on. So, uh, I'll go through my outline very quickly. We're gonna talk about what the reviews are. Uh, I will show you a video. Those of you who are in Clinton session this morning, this is the longer, much better video. Right, not, the, not the small one from this morning. Uh, I'm going to link to research, but very quickly. All right, I think most of you are here just to get practical applications, but I will talk about the research links because we do do this for a reason. We don't just do it because it sounds cool. Uh, I'm going to show you what our English review looks like in grade four and our maths review, and uh, I'll walk you through a bit about the planning that goes into it because there's a bit, there's a bit that's involved. And finally, if we get to it, oh. Uh, some challenges and some tips for you as well. All right, so what are they? You saw from the start there, they're PowerPoint presentations that we build based on previously taught content. So the idea is uh, we might talk about, we might teach abstract verbs, and then yes? Do you mind if I video your video? Because I was astounded this morning. Oh, uh, not at all, please. <laughs> go, go ahead, just don't share it, because it's got kids in it. No, I won't share uh, it. So, if we teach something like abstract nouns in week one, all right, we'll put it into review in week two, and then we'll take it out put it in week four, week eight. Keep spacing it out over the year. As Steve mentioned in, uh, in his intro, uh, maybe you can get a show of hands. Put your hand up in, in primary school, this was your experience. You, saw, you, taught, you were taught subtraction in grade three, you didn't touch it for another year. That was what my schooling was like. I right, didn't touch it for a year. Luckily, I'm an Uber genius, didn't that. <laughs> That's right. But some of my fellow students, you know, like didn't quite get it as well. So, uh, why do we do them? Uh, it facilitates the transfer of knowledge to skill and skills to long-term memory. Again, those of you who saw Steve talk this morning, learning is defined as a change in long-term memory, right? And regular review helps that. Uh, it allows for regular formative assessments. You can see there, I have to your whiteboards. I scan for your answers. Most of you did wonderfully. <laughs> <laughs> so, topics are removed and they're brought back in regularly. All right, so uh, otherwise, yeah, the reviews will be four hours long, but they're meant to be you know, short and sharp. Quick pace, essential. I'm already out of breath. All right. Uh, so here's the first video. Um, this was the one that Clint showed this morning, but as I said, this is the longer, much more interesting one. So this is uh, a review of pre uh, prefixes, roots, and suffixes. We do this most days. So very quickly, the research stuff. So daily reviews help us facilitate our transfer of long-term memory thanks to three things. The first is space practice, the idea that we space our revision out, all right, rather than cramming. So research has suggested strongly that studying a topic in regular intervals provides greater attention than cramming, all right? If you cram and you have a test the next day, you'll probably do quite well. Uh, but if you cram and then wait to do a test in a week, you're gonna lose a lot of that knowledge where spaced uh, practice keeps it up here. Uh, interleave practice, and I'll show you this later on when we do our English and maths walkthroughs. So studying many different topics in short bursts is better than what we call block practice, all right, where I might just say, I'm going to just say subtraction today. Subtraction will be, or even the whole week on subtraction, which is traditionally what my schooling is like. All right, instead, as you'll see in English and maths, we study a whole range of stuff in that 20 to 30 minute period. And then finally, retrieval practice. So removing topics and bringing them back uh, makes memories harder to retrieve, but they actually become more durable as a result. So we don't just put the same things in, in every day, we cycle things out. Uh, and doing so also aids. So they're the big three ideas, space, interleaved, and retrieval practice. If you're interested in more, I cannot recommend this book highly enough, Understanding How We Learn by Dr. Jan Weinstein and Megan Sumeraki. I was supposed to have it with me today. It's a blue book, really good. Very approachable, quite short. Uh, it's not full of jargon and stuff. Really useful. Uh, I would not, could not recommend that enough. So uh, here's our, what our English review looks like. Uh, every day, we do the following, so these are our non-negotiables, so a vocabulary, well I did two vocabulary slides, some new words uh, that have been taught previously. Uh, comprehension piece, I'm going to show you all these by the way. Uh, fluency piece, a vocabulary box, I love the vocab box, and a close activity. So they're included every single day, they're our non-negotiables. Uh, in addition to that, 
We've got previously taught knowledge and skills, which on any given day could include, this is just a very small list, parts of speech practice, nouns, verbs, adjectives, punctuation, speech marks, you know, ellipses, that sort of thing, that's what we generally do in grade four. Uh, different text types, so I might say, all right, I want you to write me the introduction to an information report. Uh, clause and sentence level grammar, so all the way from the clause level to complex sentences. Homophones, homographs, synonyms, antonyms, uh, and figure of language. Just a very small selection. Again, the idea is to be very quick and sharp. Don't want to spend more than a couple of minutes on each of these. All right, so here's an example. Those of you who follow me on Twitter, plug, uh, <laughs> I have put these slides up before, but you won't have actually seen them taught. They're normally just static. So I'm actually going to do it with you. You don't need your whiteboards. <laughs> no right. Maybe I'll get you to write a sentence at the end. Okay, all right, so I'm going to just pretend you're my grade fours. All right, grade fours, the word we're going to learn today is nonchalant. Say it, please. Nonchalant. All right, I want you to put your fingers on your chin. We're going to break into syllables. With me, here we go. Nonchalant. How many syllables? Three. Fantastic. Now, uh, it's an adjective. What part of speech is it? An adjective. Remember, adjectives used to describe a noun, used to describe a word. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. It means not fussed or worried. What does it mean? No. Not, not fussed or worried. So if I was to say, I'm feeling nonchalant, you might say, I'm feeling not fussed or worried. And if I said, oh, you're not fussed or worried, you might say, actually, I'm feeling quite nonchalant. Fantastic. Now, it's French. How do we know it's French? I won't make you do this. I our kids know. See, a digraph makes the sound. They know it's French, all right? But we don't put that in every day because sometimes the origin isn't obvious or doesn't really need to be put in. Uh, some synonyms. I'm going to say them in the new one. Carefree. Yeah, yeah, casual. 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 Happy go lucky. Happy happy go lucky. So happy go lucky is the same thing as being nonchalant, not fussed or worried. Some antonyms, some words that mean the opposite of nonchalant. Stressed. Stressed. Stress. Nervous. 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 Worried. Worried. So if I'm worried, that's the opposite of being nonchalant. And they're always a picture in a sentence. All right. And you can get really creative with these. I had a, my word was pompously the other week, so I had a caricature of Donald Trump. <laughs> Love Donald Trump. So and I'll read the sentence. The nonchalant turtle didn't have a care in the world. Nothing could phase it. So you can see, he's not fussed or worried. He is not mm -hmm. sure. And after that, I would have the students either pair share, all right? So I've got, uh, got A's and B's in each table. So A's tell you B's, time where you felt really nonchalant, or getting to write in a sentence, all right? And when they're writing in a sentence, uh, I can scan around, check the students that might need a bit extra support, nudge them the right way. Part of speech is really useful as well. Say, so remember, it's an adjective, so put it before a noun, you know? The nonchalant what? You know, I did nonchalant turtle, man. You might want to do a different kind of animal. That's okay. Two of those a day. We're doing great for that. Then a comprehension piece where we do uh, literal questions and we've got actions for these. Actions are really great. Kids love waving their arms around. So answers can be found directly in the text. They are located on the lines. That's what they say. And then inferential questions, we use the clues and our background knowledge and we read between the lines. And then evaluative questions can be answered from in your head. I love doing that. So, that's a comprehension piece, that says turn to week six, about four weeks ago, uh, about Malala Yousafzai. I love these because these are a really great way to just get the kids absolutely full to the brim with background knowledge. We know that background knowledge is a huge part of comprehension and of critical thinking. You cannot critically think about a topic without having domain level knowledge about it. So we can choose these from a whole bunch of topics and really cram them. And they love asking lots of questions about these pieces which is wonderful, but also it ruins the pacing sometimes. So you have to be careful. <laughs> so uh, here's a literal question. What was the name of Malala's pseudonym? And again, after a few seconds, I also, in grade four, full sentence answers. I'm going to just let them write basic answers. So the younger years, answer's fine, but for us it's full sentence. Uh, and again, I would scaffold by saying, you would start by saying, the name of Malala's, Malala's pseudonym was. And after a few seconds, clue in the text. For those who can't really scan through the entire piece again, should mention as well, we print these ahead of time, so they've got them on a desk. Just find that it's easier for them, especially those at the back, because that's pretty small. Uh, sorry, jumping around. I also read it to them first. I, I should have said that earlier. Uh, <laughs> inferential question. All right, so the inferential question, they're really difficult to write, I'll say. I'm shocking at writing inferential questions. Why is Malala so passionate about education? And so again, another answer on their whiteboards, or you can pair share. And then in the value of question, you know, are there any other famous females that have inspired you? Who? And you know, that's normally what really starts, kickstarts the discussion. So, you know, if you've got a spare five or ten minutes, it's wonderful to go off on those tangents because that's really where they build their background knowledge. After that, reading fluency. So this is an intro slide. We don't do these intro slides every day because at this point, no, they've been sent a hundred times. 
But the important parts of reading fluency are speed. In fact, let's do it together. We're going to read together with me. Here we go. Speed. I need to read at a good pace. It's easy to understand. Accuracy. I need to read words correctly. Expression. I need to read at the correct volume. I need to pause at commas and full stops. Come on with me. I need to show excitement for exclamation marks. All right. My inflection needs to go up for question marks. And then I need to change my voice for character speech. What time do you finish? Inquired the young man. Yeah, love it. They love it. Every time they see Will Ferrell, <laughs> just they lose their minds. All right. So uh, this year, we're really lucky in grade four, even though the fives tried to steal it from us. We have Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stones, that class novel. Couldn't be happier. Uh, so just a rich font of vocabulary, an amazing uh, scene. So I would read through this first. Uh, those of you who are curious, chapter six or seven, they're at platform nine and three quarters, and the Weasleys are about to join, uh, hop on the train. So I would read it first, and then we would either choral or echo read. So we might read it all together, uh, or I will read one line and then have them read it back to me. And the you know, model like, all right, now remember, we see a hyphen with this stuff. Remember, we've got character speech there, so we can change our voice. Okay, uh, pausing at the commas, all that sort of stuff. All right, and in this one, they get to say shut up. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. All right, uh, vocab box. Oh man, I love these. All right, so uh, we ripped this idea off Ronnie Oshimoto. Uh, but we'll claim it as ours. Not really. So the idea, uh, we read all the words together. So I read it, read it first, left to right, and then the kids read with me three times, getting quicker every time. By the end of it, it's fluent speed. So it's improvised specifically, flow, synthesized, not so that quick. Uh, so this is where we pack all of our vocab words into. Uh, you see the level that we're at in grade four, right? Some pretty massive words there. I had some nambulus in a couple of weeks ago. The other teachers had to look it up. It's a sleepwalker. <laughs> Love those kind of words. Uh, so they put their hand up and ask you, what on earth is a megameter? I'll say a megameter is a million meters, because mega is the prefix meaning a million. Uh, and we go ahead and have some questions there. So write the word, which means not worried or fussy. Have you taught them these words already? We have, yeah. So, oh, no, some of these we're exposing them to, uh, but this question here, yeah. the word that means not worried or fussy, hang on. Yeah. We've had that before. Oh. What's the answer? No, no. Oh, well done. There you go. So I always, uh, always pull back one of the vocab words in, just to give them another exposure. I write the words containing the suffix meaning make. Eyes. Eyes means make, so we would say eyes means make. They would write the four down. Uh, then, just an example, write the collective nouns. Uh, so we may have taught collective nouns a week or two previously. So the collective nouns there. I see everyone scanning. We haven't got time. I'm just going to go through it. Not heard so long. But we'll just assume you all got it correct. It's fine. Uh, then write the adverbs. Again, uh, always prompting, all right? The, the students who know it can just belt it out, right? The students who need a bit of extra support, you say, well, hang on. How can we tell what an adverb is? An adverb describes a verb, but there's a suffix that we use. A suffix li or y generally indicates an adverb. And again, there's three there. They don't all have to write three. They write one. I don't care. We move on. So there are three. And then finally, uh, write the words which refer to units of measurements. It's a good way to get some sort of cross-pollination between your subjects as well. So you can get maths in there, you can get science in there. The other day we had uh, the four layers of the rainforest, because that's what we're doing in science. So there you are. All right. Uh, then a close activity. Again, great way to just absolutely stuff them full of background noise. So this one's uh, science-based. So we start with reading the six words out. So we read those six words together. Then I would read this and I'd say, the, there are five kingdoms of blank. The Animalia Kingdom includes all blank, even blank, and read the whole thing that way. Again, I don't care if kids get all six of them. One or two is fine, but they love it. And so then we go through the answers, and we read it together, extra fluency pace. So that is, that's in every English review. All right, then there are the topics that we bring back. So here, sensing verbs, I'm gonna teach you some action. So, Read this sentence with me, if you would please. Here we go. A. Sensing, sensing verb is a part of speech. Sensing, sensing verbs describe what we will do think, slowly, what we think, think feel, want, and perceive. All right, good. So read some examples with me. Here we are. Smell, like, wonder, consider, understand. So these these slides are keeping this three-step process. So if you're going to write one thing down, this is a good thing to write down. Step one, recite. Step two, recall. And step three, apply. So recite, recall, apply. Okay? This is uh, the recite slide. It's jogging their memory. They've forgotten what a sensing verb is. Here is the recall slide. So on your whiteboard, write the sensing verbs in each sentence. So there are three example sentences again. Uh, there, and again, one's fine. 
and a lot of students don't care they only do one, definition's up here as well. So if they all of a sudden forget, it's up there. That's also to help the teachers as well. I'll talk a bit more about consistency between the grades. So uh, they're the answers if you're interested. All right, that's the, that's the, res uh, the recall section, and then apply. Write a sensing verb for each blank. But in grade fours, I have to remind them that fart is an action verb. <laughs> Can't use fart, sorry. Okay. So, smelled, felt, remembered. All right, uh, this one here. Uh, one of my kids said, uh, hypothesized the other day. Very impressive, not too bad. So that's the apply slide. All right, so uh, here's some stuff about clauses. I actually don't have time to go through them. Just more to show you my PowerPoint chops. <laughs> yeah, this is this one day? Yeah, this is one day. In fact, that's probably that's probably about half of what we do in the interview. Um, lot, normally a lot more than that. So now, maths review. As Steve said, a bit of maths guy. Love my maths. Uh, daily review. So our non-negotiables, flashcards, which I'll show you. All right, and they're they're mostly measurement based. Multiplication facts, which you guys attempted with me. Uh, <laughs> skip counting, which you did as well. Uh, Subitizing, and the word of problem. Always put the word of problem in. Uh, that. Is because of the really great power of the work example effect. Those of you who know Sweller's uh, work in cognitive load theory. So then the non-negotiables are again what we could include. This is not a complete list. Standard algorithms, so the vertical algorithms for the four processes, units of measurement, number patterns, place value, prime and composite numbers, primitive area and volume. Might just be what that review on that day looks like. So units of measurement. Oh, sorry. Uh, flashcard. So that is. Here we go. Nah, come on, what kind of triangle? Oh, yeah. Sosceles. No, it's the middle. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Now, do you know what? That's uh, a non example. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Why is this not a scaling one? <laughs> I don't know why. I have, normally, I have a review mistakes tally on my whiteboard. So the students are very, very keen to catch me out when I make a mistake. Mm. I can't believe I forgot that I put that in there on purpose. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and the word mistakes in review mistakes has a mistake in it. They're always like, oh, what is that? Why mistake? Like, what do you mean? Ten minutes, spell mistakes. Anyway, uh, minutes now, 60, 60, you get the idea. So, yeah, flash guys, yeah. I shouldn't go that quick. So, cardinal directions, 3D solids, uh, using the millennium, uh, perpendicular, like, the, there's so much you can do with that. Then, multiplications, or oh, a few people breathing easy, though, I didn't give you the eights. <laughs> <laughs> so, forwards and backwards, what we didn't do is once we did them forwards and backwards, I shout them out real quick. So, if you can, three eights. 24. Eight eights. 64. Six eights. Okay. Ten eights. Eight eights. Eight. Four eights. 48. 320. 480s. 320. 480s. 3,200. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, then we do this, as I showed you before. My, my aim is to get students to add, uh, to answer most of them above the line, alright? Uh, at this point in grade 4, not that all of our students are confident on 8, so if I can get 4 or 5 done, it's great. Well, I've got kids to just belt through this, so I have to actually put more questions in this now. Skip counting, you saw. Alright, and fact families, which we didn't do, so proud of this again. PowerPoint shops. Uh, so we would say like this, we would say 5, 8 to 40, 8, 5 to 40, 40 divided by 8 is 5, 40 divided by 5 is 8. Uh, we do that for the tables as well. So, not to tell you how long that, how long that took me today. Uh, summatizing again, alright, so summatizing, just showing them. Now, uh, Steve mentioned that there's, there's some research uh, happening into what might be the mass equivalent of phonological awareness in early childhood. There's uh, a particular school of thought that believes it might be subitizing. The evidence is not uh, perfectly solid yet, but you know, uh, subitizing kids always like it anyway. Uh, then a, a practice problem. So we have a particular framework for worded problems at the school we call cubes. You'll see a poster on my left hand wall with cubes. Uh, it's basically a framework for them. Uh, all the research into maths suggests quite strongly that uh, there's no kind of generic problem solving skill. The best way for students to get better at word problems in maths is by exposing them to as many as possible. So if they see one in a test, they might be able to say, hang on, I've seen it before, I remember the strategy. Mm. That's what uh, the work of Dr. Stephen Norton and George Booker, both from Queensland, that's basically their hypothesis. So we would cubes the question, which is to circle, underline, box all the, all the cool stuff. Uh, then worked example. The reason why I do this, and you'll see how much work goes into just one slide, is I want the approach to be consistent. There are four of us in grade four. I've got a colleague here and two over there. I want them to do the same thing. Right? It's a big part of the push with our school in the last couple of years has been lowering teacher variance. Our low variance curriculum, we want it to be as consistent as possible. Also, what if I decide <coughs> that I'm sick and I see how teachers in my grade? 
So we try and make it as foolproof as possible. So uh, calculate the cost of it. I'm stick it. Three quarters of twelve. Now this is something called the cynical bar model. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, if you went to Michael McKinnon's session just before lunch, uh, he would have talked to you a bit about that. Follow him on Twitter. A lot of good stuff. Uh, that's how we would demonstrate what three quarters of twelve is. All right. Uh, which is nine dollars. Uh, but the, the answer. It's not $9 because we want two tickets, so it's 18 So just walking them through a worded problem. Uh, then, oh, another video, here we go. Uh, this is me doing the vertical subtraction algorithm with renaming with my kids. Um, so have a look and uh, let me know what you think. How on earth does the CRT cope? Uh, I have a bank of CRT, but I can imagine coming in and going. Yeah, no, we, we, yeah. they're basically like, they're, they're basically like batteries where we kind of squeeze them Squeeze all life out of them for a week, then um, go and rest and we'll grab another one in. Uh, no, look, CRTs, I, I will say, in a lot of respects, being a CRT here would be pretty brutal. Um, but they also get all the support and all the routines and the kids behave and that sort of thing as well. So it's kind of a, a, a balance, I guess. So that's the slide I just did. Um, yes? I'm just wondering, uh, children that are, have got learning difficulties, how do they cope with the... I know you'll differentiate in terms of when the yellow slide comes up. Yep. That constant, constant, would they Sorry. just get totally... No, as long as they're, long as they're listening, it's fine. Okay. They don't actually have to participate yeah. verbally. Yeah. Um, my, my students at this point, you know, we're sort of halfway through the year. My students are pretty comfortable being able to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, even my severely dyslexic students yeah. uh, at this point, they've committed that slide to memory, so they're able to participate anyway. And it kind of, you know, feels a bit of a sense of achievement that they're able to actually say it with everyone else. Uh, when it comes to the actual slides, though, I'm very lucky this year. A very strong mass cohort. The, the grade fours at the school are particularly strong. So. So they've been doing this since when? Like your grade 4s? 2015. Yeah, so the grade 4s are basically, I call them our guinea pig cohort because they actually were the first ones to start in prep with the EDI. So they're, out, they're kind of out. So the NAPLAN results that I presented uh, this morning are these yeah, this yeah, cohort. They're, they're last year's grade 3s. So are you noticing? Like, have you, oh, you, massive step up. Huge. These, yeah. For these kids, you've noticed that they're, yeah. they're obviously... Yeah, yeah. No, they're, your first cohort that you've had that have had it since prep? Yes, yeah. yeah uh, you uh, noticed massive difference. So that's the slide I just presented. In the interest of time, I'm just going to squeeze through it, but just get a sense of how much it goes into these things. Uh, I'll also show you this is two by two digit multiplication. So again, everything very, very meticulous, one step at a time, stepping it through. Uh, don't have time to read it all for you, but still on the same slide. We're still on the same slide. Using these same slides, once they're set up, you use them next year. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you benefit from an economy scale. You do it once, and then all you need to do is tweak. Uh, so some uh, questions for them. Always have to be worked out. In grade four, so we always make sure that way if they've got the answer wrong, they've got a better chance of understanding where they went wrong. If you just go and put the answer up, they've got no idea where they went wrong. Mm -hmm. But they're able to self correct their errors a lot better this way. Uh, all right, uh, this I don't have any time to show you, but it's really cool, I promise. <laughs> some probability. Uh, all right, so some design considerations uh, if you decide to uh, do this in your own classrooms, um, have each element appear. Gradually, you may have noticed that already. All right, that's got to do with cognitive load and reducing the amount of extraneous load. Uh, there's no point in having everything up there just 500 words on the slide. Where do the kids focus? Where's the kids focus? Next bit. <laughs> Don't do what primary school kids do. When they do a PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, you see the wiggle, and then oh look. <laughs> okay. Don't do that. All right. Keep it simple. Again, we're trying to uh, reduce extraneous load. If you've got everything coming in, maybe the bullet sound effect every level one at once, that's what they're focused on, all right? So make it nice and plain. Uh, the notes section. So uh, those of you who know PowerPoint, well, in fact, I'm just going to show you. No, I can't because it's not on that screen, not on my laptop. Uh, so there is a, a notes section below the slide in PowerPoint. That's where you can put your teacher instructions because when they're presenting with a second screen, in fact, I can show it to you from here, uh, the notes will come up here. Right, so they can be looking at their computer and they'll have the notes for teaching, especially important for CRTs. Right, so they're able to uh, sort of deliver the content in the same way. Uh, but even better than that is having the instructions on the slides themselves, and it's completely foolproof. All right, uh, I think I have to go through all those again. Good, uh, the text should be short and succinct. All right, especially in primary school, uh, definitions need to be kid friendly, they need to be very short. Okay, uh, as I said, actions always really helpful. Uh, and they don't have to be stiff and boring. Uh, hopefully I've shown you that already, but I'm about to embarrass myself with some really dumb slides. So, uh, this was Friday's vocab box. <laughs> Have a question. Write the words which describe all the things that your teacher will be doing on holidays. <laughs> Alright, they loved it. 
Because yeah, they're asking me before, why well, sleep in there three times? Oh, must have made a mistake. <laughs> All right, uh, also the close activity. How about this one? <laughs> All right, this is also Fridays. I'm really looking forward to the holidays. On the holidays, I'm going to do lots of holidays activities and really enjoy my holidays. Are you looking forward to the holidays? Oh, I can't wait for the holidays. All right? So you can have a bit of fun with it. It doesn't have to be super, super serious all the time. Uh, this one here, you would have seen in the video, but you, those of you in the back may not have seen. So, you know, Transformers. You know, at the risk of embarrassing myself even more. And this one, uh, if you are currently taping, please don't share this with me. Um, so how many magnificent faces are there? I'm not going to lie. This took a long time, but it was worth it. <laughs> um, my students like to troll me by writing zero <laughs> which is very charming uh, but yes so you can do dumb stuff like that I would love to do it with the other grade 4 teachers they'll never give me so permission and please would you mind stacking the chairs in the spaces you're in other than the hall thanks Zero. alright uh, so that's just an example of some of the, the silly things that you can do I think that's also 5 minutes so I did better than I thought uh, the challenges, I don't know why they're not animating properly. The first one, it is a large upfront time investment. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I've done a lot of work on these this year. Mm -hmm. I, did, I started last year, but really this year is when we kind of really hit the ground running with it. Uh, however, though, wonderful effective leadership, it's my only responsibility. I'm not in charge of lesson planning. I'm not in charge of any of the admin work in grade four. This is purely my job. Oh, wow. All right, so otherwise, forget it, I'd burn out. Uh, so it is a large upfront time investment. Remember, upfront. Next year, mate, cruise. It's going great too, though. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> One person in each team does. We've we already, we already had this discussion. I've threatened to see with grievous bodily harm if he moves, <laughs> if he moves me next year. Because I want to enjoy the fact that these are already done. Uh, so the pace. Yeah, from prep to six. Yeah. No, no, it was. Well, yeah. I'm also OCD, so the slides are <laughs> slide really beautiful. Uh, so the pacing can be difficult to adjust to, as, as you've seen. All right, we really belt, belt it out. Um, but when you get there, uh, difficult not for us, but you know, not just for us, but the students as well. But they cope better. Any rubbish from the main as well, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Uh, and finally, the season's supposed to animate in. Then that way would actually be funny. You may start dreaming about PowerPoint. I'm not kidding. I mean, four, four times so far this year. I've joined about PowerPoint, which is, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty tragic. Uh, but there we go, and uh, my Twitter handle and my email address are not putting up. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, you know what? Twitter is so important to me. I'm going to put, I'm gonna put my, my handle up right here. Uh, look, we do have a couple of minutes if there are any questions, because uh, I know that was an absolute ton of stuff. Uh, but yes, thank you so much for coming. Yes? Do you have set periods of time that when you do that, or, and, and is it the same? Great question. So I, I actually did have our review schedule. We have um, a, an Excel template that uh, the brother-in-law of one of our teachers has done that we're not ready to roll out yet. But uh, it basically, you put in the date that you've taught something and it'll spit out the exact dates that you want it in the review. So generally, if we teach it on, let's say, day one, we put it in the next five days and then after a week, two weeks, four weeks, eight weeks. But I will tell you, the actual interval doesn't really matter, all right? And that's, that's out of that understanding how we learn books. So there, there, have been, there has been some research into different intervals, but as long as you're actually doing it, it's got benefits. Uh, if you've heard of Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve, all right, where you just sort of, as immediately after learning something, you automatically start forgetting almost instantly, uh, that sort of suggests, it's sort of an exponential relationship. So here's it's like 30 seconds, five minutes, an hour a day, a week, a month, a year. So you can spread them out longer. Uh, so I think, like vertical addition without renaming, our grade fours are really solid with. So I'm not going to put that back in probably until towards the end of term three. And That's we why we've got the conference tomorrow as well again. So you can come back for a minute. Yes. Yes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> not a <One> yes. <laughs> not a yes. No, next week. I'm not going to pay for this at all. <laughs> Goodness, my heart's supposed to be on holidays. Come on. Did you see how much I love holiday things? Oh, dear me. Yes. So that amazing video with the prefixes and the suffixes, and the kids are like robots. Yeah. So when, how long did it take to teach all of that before you put it into So the vast class? majority happened before they hit grade four. The, the only right. uh, new roots and new suffixes in that video that are grade four, um, so ism, belief, doctrine or condition, and eyes meaning make. So those two suffixes are the only ones. Oh. I think the rest of them they'd already learned in previous years. Mm -hmm. at, at this point, by grade four, Probably about 30 to 30, no, it's closer to 50 prefixes, probably about 30 suffixes and about 25 roots. So we cycle them out every week. So I've got a, a master PowerPoint and I basically yeah. choose which ones to put in. 
Yeah, so when you taught the new ones, you would have just taught them. So we taught them if you're in uh, if you're in Clint's session this morning, we taught them in that way, the sort of the Ron Yoshimoto way, where we give them uh, we've got booklets for them in grade four. Okay. We'll write on the board, you know, uh, is a means to believe doctrinal yeah. condition, do it three times, put it in a sheet, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then it goes into the review from there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes. How do you decide the actions that you do? Uh, so, so when we're trying to make the actions for, especially for the morphology stuff, because I think that's the most important sort of place for the actions, we're trying to make those consistent. So I think we've, we've said that this year's grade twos will basically be, that's going to be gospel, and then every year we'll just be in charge of creating actions for that specific year level. So I've decided them for grade four, so I'll actually, you know, get up in front of our planning sessions and you know, do, the, do, the, do the actions for them so that we're consistent. Uh, but yeah, that's something we're working towards long term. In, ter in terms of stuff like the sensing verbs, yeah, the, the think, feel, that kind of stuff. I just kind of make them up and then tell my team, we're doing this, you should do it as well. Yeah. Yes? Can I ask you for, just very briefly, generally, about your planning? Do you plan across grade levels? or? Uh, well, so we plan, we plan within grade levels. So yeah. we've got uh, we've got four, four planning periods a week. Uh, so we, we do team planning. Uh, but I'm also in, uh, we also have vertical teams. So I'm uh, one of the members of our reviews team. So we get together. That's what uh, most of our after school staff meetings are about. We talk about, well, this is a slide that I've created. You know, you might find some use for it in your year level. We sort of collaborate in that space. Really? Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you.